And now, it's time for LeVac and Gaz to answer the question, Why? 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 Seattle. <laughs> it's that time on Wednesdays where it's just simple as this. We ask the question why. Some things in sports just baffle us so much, and I need explanations, and my man Levesque is here to help me out. I know I can make up a good answer. You can, you can't, I mean, I know the things. You can't answer with, I don't know, and why not? Here we go, the first can I one. Answer with answer with a... Seattle. Is I'll, that allowed? I'll, I'll allow that kind of, but you have to follow up. The first one, the Buffalo Bills fans definitely want to know this. The NFL officials are still part-time employees. Seattle. Why? Uh, this is... Actually, it is Seattle. <laughs> Much of the reason is because of Seattle, Coach. You're right. We, they have yet to figure it all out. I was just reading an article from Mike Pereira, former official, and, and he thinks it, it would be financially irresponsible to make them full-time employees because they don't work that much. I, I, I got to tell you, man, I'm all about trying different ideas. If we're not going to make them full-time, let's go with God's idea where you can actually, actually challenge certain calls. Only a couple of them. Let's not go crazy. Let's add one more challenge. And it's the same deal as before. If you if you use the first one, you get it right, you get to keep it. You lose it, you lose it. I just we gotta do something because some of these calls are just too big. They they're on the grand stage, and we're not getting any kind of explanation afterwards. Or if we do, it's like, hey, we're sorry we blew that for you, but uh, yeah, you're still gonna lose that game. I love the idea that you're warming up to some ideas I propose, so that makes me feel very I'm just, good. I'm just willing to try it so we can get past it and get to my idea. The issue is. <laughs> Now, let's not forget, being an official, being an umpire, being a referee in a respective sport, it's unique in the sense that you're still dealing with snap judgments. All the training in the world still comes down to what did you see on that snap play, that split second? Was he in? Was he out? Did he catch it? Did he not? I don't know how much training is going to affect it when you get to that moment. And there's always human error. We have to factor that in. The reason why NFL officials are still part-time is because there's no turning back once they become full-time employees. So you're going to give them full-time employeeship. You're going to have them employed, doing all the rules, doing this, doing that. And the first time in 2017, 2018, whatever it is, they start screwing up. What do you do to punish them? You hire a new one. You hire a new Same one, you I do guess. any full-timer. I, I know. You put them in training. You, I, so the, the crew that officiated... The, uh, the, what was it, uh, Buffalo versus Seattle. That, they're not even working this week for unrelated reasons. Do you really think it's unrelated or do you think they're being punished? <sighs> they want them to get away. They want them to move. But I just can't see them becoming full time employees. Then all of a sudden the officials start doing a poor job, which is possible with all the rules in the NFL. And they say, you know what? Can we go back to them being part time? Then the outcries, oh, the NFL doesn't care. They're making it part time. This hurts the league. I can see the hot takes coming from everywhere involving that. Once you go back, to full time land, you're not going back to part time NFL, right. and they know and, that. And you'll have you'll have real full time employees that will answer to a full time supervisor. I gotta be honest, guys. As somebody who, when you started here, you were part time. You got better when you were full time. Yeah, that's I think that's debatable. I mean, not good, but better. <laughs> I think I was always great. I think it would have been great yeah. if I was an intern here. We'll move on to number two. No official word on Jets quarterback Bryce Petty starting this week for the Jets. Why? This is uh, th- this situation. I think Todd Bowles is coaching to save his job, and I think he's doing it the wrong way. I think he is trying to win every game he can in an attempt to keep himself employed. I feel like he knows he's losing a grip on this team. He's got you know two of the sons of anarchy missing meetings, coming in late, the whole nine, and on top of all of that, he he's got this situation at quarterback where. They had to pay Ryan Fitzpatrick even though nobody wanted to. And now that they have, he's just trying to win as many games as he can so it looks good at the end. Bottom line, get Bryce Petty out there, grab hold of your team, take control, and see what you got for next year. He's got a chance here in practice. And now he was injured for early part of the season, so he couldn't impress the coaches from what he had learned, what he'd been doing on the field. But Ryan Fitzpatrick, according to reports, was a full participant in individual quarterback drills today. So, he's out there, he's practicing. He's not even giving the Jets an idea to look at Bryce Petty for first-team reps. No, he doesn't <laughs> want to. No, he doesn't want that to happen. So, what? that's really the reason why 
Fitzpatrick is still sticking around and seeing the coach's ear and eyes and saying, I'm still here. I'm still better. Which kind of makes me feel, because remember the Cleveland game where he goes out and he's like, no, no, challenge to play so I can get back out there. Like, I think I, that's my biggest reason I want to see Bryce Petty. What is Fitz seeing that's told him that if I, if I let him get in, I'm getting Wally pipped? That or either the other thing is that Fitz knows i got to put something on film here because my contract's out at the end of the season. Somebody's got to hopefully sign me as either a veteran backup or at least make some money somewhere. He's going, he's going right back down to the two-year, six to seven million dollar range, and he's going to be a backup. Here on why the baby iguana snake video from Planet oh Earth 2 has become the new sensation on the internet, Lovac. Why? You made me watch this today, and I have never been so invested in the safety of a lizard, like, since the really good Geico commercials. Like, I, like, I watched this, this baby iguana three times. I watched it the first time, the normal video, with just do dramatic music behind it, as, like, a thousand snakes are chasing him. Oh, it's amazing. It's crazy. It, it's At least like a thousand. It's, it's like, um, I, I think it's iguana born supremacy. Like, I feel like it's that. Like, the run, like, he's climbing and whatever. Then I found Ozzy Man, who's this guy with a British accent, who, who, who narrated it in the most <laughs> profane way possible, which I thought was hysterical. And then I found a couple others that just, like, are just hysterical. Great video. Crazy video. I'm not going to ruin the ending for you. It may make you cry. If you have Google, just type in Iguana Snake Video. It's from Planet Earth 2, a documentary. It's sort of like a national discovery, like right in there filming the animals and their natural habitat. Yeah, how do they get the cameras there? It's amazing. Everything about it, how it's filmed, everything that goes on. Again, we don't want to ruin it. I'm sure you've already seen it, but it is addictive. I watched the one with the NFL primetime background noise. So as if the iguana was like running for a touchdown, and, like, oh, it was great. But dude, like, How many times does somebody come into my office and tell me to watch something and I'm just like, whatever, leave me alone? You did it today, and I, li- I watched it three times. Number four here on why Colin Kaepernick acknowledged he didn't vote in this year's election. Oh. Why? Dude, I, Not even so much why he didn't vote, but why would that become public knowledge that he didn't vote? Because he, because he's not getting enough attention. I, I don't like. I said I, I'm watching this. I'm watching this protest change, a, and each player is affecting the protest slightly different. Now. Colin Kaepernick started it. He sat there during the national anthem. He didn't want to be noticed, whatever. And what, so we did. We talked about it. He's still not doing it. Now he's not voting. So how are you making this country better? What exactly are you doing? Okay, so wait. You're not. You're taking a knee to make the country better. Brandon Marshall, linebacker, former teammate from University of Nevada. He's out there. He's like, you know what? Salute to service. Salute to the military. I'm standing this week. And he began to tweet out his, his, for lack of a better term, political agenda. These are the reasons. These are the people that I'm trying to help. These are the, these are the, the charities I want you to notice. These are the ways that you can be socially active. Do that. Go vote. I don't want to hear a word from Colin Kaepernick now. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're playing football again. You're actually playing kind of well. He may have tried to outsmart himself because this was a classic reporter bait question that he didn't let get to the bait level. Reporter asked Kaepernick, have you voted? Kaepernick, no. Reporter follow-up, are you going to vote? Kaepernick, no. Now, what Kaepernick may have thought was, he says yes, reporter follows up, who are you voting for, why, gets into a whole political... Say the same thing my parents always said, that I always say. It's none of your business who I vote for. Exactly. And there's that's a reason we, there's a curtain on a booth. And if he actually did vote and he told the media no, don't do that. You know you're under so much scrutiny. I don't scrutiny. think he voted. I, I, think I he don't thinks, either. He thinks he's some kind of big political activist. The only thing he is is a is a is a better than average quarterback. You may have said this before, and I apologize if it's not you, but I have so many friends who say it too, and it's if you don't vote, you don't get to complain. Yep. That's that was the motto of my household growing up. You don't get to complain. Yep. You don't get to do it. So, I mean, like I said, I hope some good comes out of what his original protest because we obviously, as a country, we had a big divide between like the inner cities, the police officers, and everything. There was communication has to be has to be started. Taking a knee, not voting, is not starting communication. It's holding your breath and stomping your feet like a baby. Yeah, and we go to the next one here. It involves voting, and it also involves an internet favorite. Seattle. No, not Seattle, Bill. Harambe. <laughs> The deceased gorilla got. I'm sorry fif- for laughing. Got fifteen thousand votes for 15, president. Fifteen thousand times Why? people wrote in and voted. Oh, oh, instead of voting for Donald Trump, 
Hillary Clinton, what, Gary Johnson, Jill Stein, Stein, Jill right. Stein, Harambe. 15,000 people. 15,000 for a deceased gorilla from six months ago in the presidential race in the United States of America. I, I mean, if this, if, <laughs> if this wasn't already one of the craziest elections ever, can you imagine if, if there were enough votes for Harambe, for whatever political party we decided he was part of, to actually get on the ballot for, for the next election? If you want to be a write-in candidate or you as a voter want to do a write-in candidate, that's okay. That's great. But please pick someone who's alive or even a human being. Like, we're not, a, I'm not asking for much. <laughs> pick anybody. A pulse, if you want to vote for human your, DNA. Yeah, you want to vote for your brother, your sister, your uncle because you're not a fan of the candidates, you have the right to do that. But come, just pick a person. I just, I, I was hoping that I looked close because I was hoping they meant Kyle from the LOL crew here, our, our setup guy, our, our on site producer, because, like, I would love to see him in office. I would too. Kyle would be great in office. Oh, God, yeah. You know, he would just be the, like, whatever, leave me alone. 